have a review here for a program that is only available for Mac called iFlex. What this is, is a program so if you are converting your collection of movies or TV shows to digital format for backup or whatever, you can quickly and easily add information to it, such as a title description, year released, poster, uh, even a poster to it. You can queue up more than one as well, and it is actually quite intelligent. Let me show you. Now, this is not what it says. This is not Hocus Pocus 1993 movie. I have just named it that, and it is to, because it is an example when I do something like this, I always use. It's not it. It's just an example. And notice there is dots as well. Hocus dot, Pocus dot 1993, which normally in similar programs stops it from picking up quite so easily just from the file name. Let me show you. There, a few seconds, it's done, even with the poster image. And as you can see, it's picked up straight away just from the file name, even with those dots, that it's Hocus Pocus, and it's from 1993. I didn't have to do anything. Click on it. Name, correct. Video type, movie. Tagline, description. Release date. Genre, comedy. Content rating, PG, advisory rating, none, definition, 720p, it's picked up that it's a 720p video file, if it was 1080p it would pick it up, if it's standard definition it would know it that itself, I haven't selected any of that, it's selected the cover art as well, Co any comments, in this case it says, you know, it's found it on that service online, it's put in some actors and directors, it's put in some producers and screenwriters, some, and some other information here, and it's t put in an encoding tool. If we go here, we can select some preset. Do we want to make it iTunes compatible and send it to iTunes? Do we want to make it universal, so it's available, compatible with all Apple devices? Do we want to select an individual device here? Destination. Change the file name if we wish. It's decided it wants to name it that, and that's fine with me. Delete the source original file. After it's finished, add in the information and add it to iTunes. Like, do you want it to delete the old original file that didn't have the information? Do you want to add it to your iTunes library straight away or not? Or And some details. This button here just gets rid of that sort of shelf. From here is where you can add another another video file or remove one. Start is where you start it to actually apply these effects that it has found. From the menu bar, which you can't see in this window, I'm just focusing on the main window, you can get to preferences. So let's bring up preferences for you. Let's start at the beginning. Preferences, preset, do you want it to set it up by default when you open the program to update the metadata and rename the video file? Do you want it just to update the data, uh, the information such as the poster and the, de and the details? Or do you want it to do it and rename the file as well? Then these couple that you've seen before and the various other presets that you've seen before in the other menu. Do you want to make sure the file is optimized for streaming, such as streaming on the internet or on your network? Do you want to change the default destination? Although even if you change it here, you can change it for each individual file separately as well. Do you want to have the box to add to iTunes ticked by default or unticked by default? Although again, you can change individually. Delete source files again can be changed individually. Metadata language, English, Ch Chinese or whatever your language may be. Do you want to get it content rating such as PG, 15, 18 or whatever? from the United Kingdom or United States or what, in my case, United Kingdom. Watch folder, you can add a folder. So say you always convert your collection and add it to a certain folder, such as maybe in your movies folder, you have a folder called collection or whatever. You can tell it to watch for new files added to that folder and automatically um, change the details and posts and things like that as soon as that video file has been detected. Not something I use, but a handy little feature. Rules. On file load, do you want it to automatically add the HD tags depending upon what it finds? 
do you want it to fix the names for certain shows? I don't really know what quite what it does. It was ticked by default. After the mega metadata updates, do you want it to set the file name of movies and TV shows and description? Of, do you want to use the description as tagline or not? I basically just left this on default from what I can remember. After processing, none are set up there by default, but you can add a new role. You probably can't see quite all of this here, but you can add a description, just basically saying what it is. It's basically just giving it a name. If the following conditions apply, do this, and then do the following, and you can run an Apple script. If you know what that is, it's beyond the scope of this review, but if you know what that Apple script is, or action script, you can use them with this program. So you can really get down to the fine details and really customize what you're doing with this program. Now, before I tell you what I think of it, let's just hit start and I'll show you what it does. Get a progress bar here. Once it's done the initial uh, percentage, it will then come up with this symbol if you have optimized for streaming tick. If you have that tick, it will have this little globe as it's sorting that out. Then once that's done, it will change to a symbol of the uh, iTunes logo to show it's sorting out the information. See, there you go, for iTunes and adding it to the iTunes library, if that's what you've got ticked, of course. After it's finished everything, it will come up which you didn't see in this window but in the top right it will come up with a notification and it's changed the symbol in the top right of the poster image to a green circle with a tick to let you know that, that has finished as I mentioned earlier you can line up quite a few files you can you don't have to just do one at a time you can do a whole queue and start it's available on the Mac App Store so if you go to the Mac App Store, go to the top right and just search for iFlex, you'll find it straight away. Do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it. If you are doing a lot with video files, digital video files, like converting DVDs, Blu-rays or whatever, even if it's just for backup and you're not going to watch them on your computer or whatever, it's so handy to be able to quickly, within seconds, get this information, change all the file name and the metadata, and add a poster image on top of the video file. I have used a trial of another program called Identify, and I recommend getting iFlix over Identify. Why I say that is because it doesn't have quite as many features. Also, it's a bit less automatic, it's a bit more manual to find the show that you want. And often, I've had a lot of trouble with Identify, where if you put in a title to search for that movie, it'll say nothing, nothing found. And it can be a simple thing as you missed out in the official disc official title. There might be a comma or whatever. And it, if you don't find that, it won't find the movie. You have to put it, including any symbols, precisely what it is on things like Internet Movie Database. If it ain't exact, it just won't find it. It won't try to figure it out for itself. And it won't find it from... It won't even attempt, as far as I know, to find out the movie from the file name this one actually takes a look at your file name and sees okay and it sees okay you got those words in it and it's even got some a date in it let's take that and see if it's if there's a movie that matches if there is let's use it and it works really well even when you've got dots in between the words it just works so much better for me it's absolutely great it works exactly like it should i'm very impressed by it if you look on the Mac App Store, uh, just beware, there are two versions. There is an old version that is now free, and then there is iFlix 2, which is the latest version. Uh, the one I'm reviewing at the moment is one. It is a second version, but it's 2.2, which is a uh, update, which I presume will be free for users of version 2 that is currently in beta but it seems to work well anyway i think it probably will be out of beta soon anyway so if you have any questions about this software like if you want to know if it has a certain feature or not or if you need help using it just ask in the comments and i'll try to get back to you 
please like and share this video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.